Cleanse my guilt and pride Blood of Christ the crucified From your hands, your feet, your side Jesus, I trust in you You know, I've been saying for a long time that I believe a sequence of events is coming and I see no reason to change my mind yet. Hindsight is always a lot better. But uh, so far, I see no reason to change my mind. There is judgment about to fall, folks. And uh, it's going to bring this new world order that the Bible speaks about in Revelation chapter 12. The dragon with the seven heads and ten horns. The first stage in the new world order. The judgment that's about to fall on the earth is going to frighten the earth so bad that they're going to decide that they need a one world order and that the UN, frankly, is not enough because it really doesn't uh, have an, enough authority or power to enforce stability. They, the world is going to cry out for law and order very shortly, folks. I'm talking about international law and order because there are bad actors out there. In fact, we're living in one right now. <laughs> there are bad actors out there that uh, don't understand the ways of God. They want to force their way into everything. It's so neat to know that um, if a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. It's so neat to know that we don't have to wrestle with flesh and blood, but instead we wrestle with the principalities and powers. The world doesn't understand that. The worldly Christian doesn't understand that. And that's not Christianity, folks. Jesus was at peace and his disciples were at peace. They didn't wrestle with the world. They didn't, they didn't take sides with one part of the world against another part of the world. They stayed out of their business. They took care of their business, which was the good, the great commission to go forth and share. We're the only ones here that can do that, folks. You know, if we, get caught up in the world, and we do the things that the world is doing, who's going to do our job? Our job is to offer the benefits of Jesus Christ to this world. We need to get about our business. And I can tell you that the Lord is going to restore the fear of the Lord so that an awful lot of Christians are going to get about their father's business. Remember when Jesus was very young and he said, I must be about my father's business? Well, that's what we're here for as sons of God. Now, Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren, the Bible says. And as sons of God, we need to be about our father's business. And um, our father's business, frankly, is the Great Commission. We need to study to show ourselves approved so that the Lord can use us to do those things that those first disciples did. And that is demonstrate the power of God's salvation in all forms spirit soul and body and um he offers to you this authority to be um an ambassador for him to represent him to this world and the only way you can represent jesus and be a witness of jesus is according to him you have to walk as he walked and um you know he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he do also and so that's true Christianity, folks. Come out from among them, those dead churches out there that don't believe in the Jesus, the same Jesus of the Bible. That's a reprobate church. It's just playing church. That's all it is. So you need to come out from among them and seek a true fellowship with the Lord that's uh, around the Word of God. The Word of God in your heart is what's going to carry you through these times to come. A great shaking is coming. Every time we've had a new world order, I've pointed this out to you before, every time we have come across a new world order, it was because there was a great shaking. World War I brought the League of Nations. World War II brought the United Nations. And now we're about to have another war that's worse than either one of those. And it's going to bring the dragon. Yes, it is. The dragon kingdom, which is just another reformation of the UN. That's all it is, folks. All nations are going to be in this beast, just like the Bible says. It's going to be different from every beast before it because it's going to have all nations in it. And, uh, of course, a one-world religious order is coming along with it. But 
at any rate, what would cause the world that disagrees on so much to come together on anything? I'll tell you, fear. That's what's worked before. That's what will work this time. And you're praying for those loved ones on every side. And you're praying for the the people in the world to come to Jesus. And the fear of the Lord has to be restored. We will not get out of the shaking that's coming. He said, yet once more will I shake the heavens and the earth. And uh, as we've seen in the last couple of weeks from different verses in the Bible, that the Lord said that this is what was going to cause his people to come out of the world and into his kingdom. The shaking. The shaking, the truth, the latter rain, these are going to combine together to bring God's people out of this world. So get ready, because it's coming. I believe that America's in for a strike that um, will be worse than any 911 for sure. And um, that won't be the end of it. There'll be a war in the Middle East. There'll be strikes against Iran and Iraq and I don't know who all else, maybe even Syria. But it's going to be a terrible war. It's going to put the fear of God in the world. And um, God's going to use this to cause a lot of Christians to give up their foolishness and turn away from the traditions of men and get into that word. Because people are going to realize it is the end times. You know, the world knows what I'm talking about. Not just the Christians, not just the prophecies. Many of you out there have had dreams and visions, revelations of these things coming, of cities being nuked in America, of, Mer of America striking back at Iran, of a, of a great war starting through all this. Many of you have seen that. But you know what? The experts know it too. That's the strange thing, that now they're, they're uh, agreeing with the dreams and the prophecies and the revelations that the Lord has given to us of these things that are coming. These things that we're talking about, they're just a repetition of history. It's just that God has to do it on a larger scale. The judgments that are coming upon this nation and upon the other nations, all the nations of the world, these judgments aren't coming because of the world. These nations are, these judgments are coming because of God's people. Read the Bible. It is very specific, very clear that God works all things together for the good of his people. The judgments, the why is it that every world ruling empire in the Bible conquered Israel? Can you imagine that little sliver of land? Why is it that God ordained that that happened, that he said himself that he drew these nations to do this? Like, for instance, in Isaiah 10 and 5, where he said it about the Assyrian Empire. That he put it in their hearts to go and conquer and plunder Israel. And now he's raising up a one world empire to do the same with New Testament Israel, the church. New Testament spiritual Israel, the church. So the things that are happening, we can't blame them upon the world. That's deception. Christians are pointing their finger at the world. You got to repent. America, you got to repent. No, it's the Christians that haven't repented. That's why these things are coming. God's, I, I, I agree that God is demonstrating his power against sin around us to impress us with the fear of the Lord. But the truth is, the reason this world is falling apart is because there's no Christianity in it. He goes on to say, the Lord said in Jeremiah 51 and 14, Surely I will fill you with men as with locusts, often having the meaning in the Bible of the Chaldeans or the Muslims. And they lift up a shout against thee. Jeremiah prophesies in Jeremiah 51 and 62. O Lord, you have spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever. Let me explain this. I know some of you um, would pick out things like George Washington's vision, an astounding vision that George Washington had. Um of the invasion of America. You know, he was right on the first two wars he described, perfectly right. That the next one he described, we haven't seen yet, but it, it was very much an almost total conquering of the United States. But at the end, he saw bright spirits come down and strengthen 
the people of America to cast off this invasion. And America wasn't totally conquered. It was never the same again, uh, but it wasn't totally destroyed. So how is it that Jeremiah, when it's speaking about the great eagle, in type and shadow, of course, which is the United States, the greatest end-time nation that it calls Babylon. So how is it that they say it will be totally desolate forever? Neither man nor beast will be in it. I'll tell you why, because this is what the Lord showed me. Now think about it. Zion in the New Testament, God speaks of a spiritual Zion, a born-again Zion, a place where the presence of God is. A mountain of God's presence, a place where New Testament spiritual Israel is going to. They're leaving Babylon and they're going to Zion. It's a, it's a spiritual sojourning. It's a parable in the Bible about growing up in God, right? So Zion is not a physical place, it's a spiritual place. Now, what about Babylon? There's two cities in the Bible that are emphasized more than any others. It's Zion and Babylon. Babylon is a spiritual entity. It is ruled, according to Isaiah, uh, by the God of this world. The king of Babylon is identified there in Isaiah 14 as the devil himself, Lucifer, the morning star. And uh, you, just, you just think that it is the God of the Bible. It is the Jesus of the Bible that runs America. But they got a Jesus that don't exist, folks. The real, true Jesus is the Jesus of the Bible. What is going to be destroyed totally is that entity called Babylon. It's going to be destroyed totally. It has taken over this nation. Uh, the symbols in the Bible have been found to be true every time. The lion, the bear, the eagle. In every one of those instances, it was fulfilled as prophecy in ancient times. Now we're finding that all of those symbols of nations are now again being fulfilled in the end time, a repetition of history, except we know that the bear is not medio persia this time, it's Russia. And we know that the eagle is not Babylon this time, it's America. And just as the a medio persian uh, bear conquered the great eagle in ancient times, the, medio, the uh, Russian bear will conquer the, the eagle in these days. Just as all the prophets have been saying, even though they might not have known it was in the scriptures, they've been saying it for many, many years. And as the Lord showed to me, these things are going to happen. And the reason is because America has been uh, gospel saturated. American Christians uh, claim to believe the Bible, but don't. And without tribulation, without persecution, there won't be any righteousness in them. And many of them will miss the kingdom. Uh, I say that many of them that we call Christians today will miss the kingdom anyway. But without these tribulations that are to come, multitudes more would split hell wide open because they are not Christian. And their faith is not faith either. He goes on to say, now Babylon here may be Babylon of old, but the old Babylon was landlocked. But this one has seaports that are smoldering as the soldiers mourn their loss. Yes, and it was said by, very clearly in Jeremiah 15, 51 that it was compassed about by many waters. You can't say that about natural Babylon. There's many things in Jeremiah 15, 51 that do not fit natural Babylon at all. It is not a fulfillment of Jeremiah 15, 51. America is the greatest end-time nation, the most powerful end-time nation, the, most, uh, the greatest trading nation. Many things identify America clearly, the great eagle. Ezekiel 17 calls it the great eagle. As Christians, God didn't call us to wrestle with flesh and blood or, or fight with Muslims. He, he called us to go to them with the gospel, the good news of what Jesus did. And if necessary, die doing it. That's what he called us to do. He did not permit us. He forbid us to uh, return evil for evil, to do anything but love our enemies. He... Um, Turned the other cheek when he was going to his cross, and so did his disciples. Not a one of them fought. The only time they took up the sword, they got a rebuke for it from Jesus himself. So the Christians that are about to fight in this nation, they don't know what Christianity is about. They haven't read their Bible. They don't know the commands of Jesus. 
He that lives by the sword shall die by the sword. That's his promise. So, no, our problem is not conquering the Muslims. That's the problem right there, is that they think that the thing, only thing we can do is conquer the Muslims. That is ridiculous. They don't understand that the Muslims are there in the first place because of sin in the camp. If a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace. That's what the Bible says. The reason God's raising up an enemy is the same reason he did it all through the Bible. Rebellion in the camp of God's people. Pick up, you, you want to do something to stop this? <laughs> There's only one thing. It's repent. Not the world. You know, the world cannot repent, folks. Nobody can repent without the grace of God. The Bible says he grants repentance. The world cannot repent. You have been given the gift to repent, not the world. And uh, if you think they've been given that gift, you go share the gospel with them. You'll find it out. Most of them will not receive it. Those who discern and act must do so now. The Lord promises in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Hey, folks, got a revelation for you. Israel had a land, a physical land in the Old Testament. What about spiritual Israel, those who've been grafted into the olive tree of Israel? What land do we have? <laughs> You think it's a carnal land? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. Oh, we haven't been called to fight to conquer any physical land. So while these people think that they can pray and God will save their land, let me point out to you that the overwhelming majority of people in the United States, about 98% of them are not Christians. Oh, sure, I know everybody was born a Christian. If you weren't born a Muslim, you're a Christian, right? I used to make the mistake of going through the hospitals and praying for people, and I'd ask them if they're a Christian. Well, you know, <laughs> most of them would say, yeah. If they weren't a Muslim, that's what they would say. Yeah, I'm Christian. You know? So I begin to ask the question a little differently. When I realized what was happening, you know, I'd start, you know, asking them if they'd ever really had a born-again experience with Jesus Christ, you know? And they... If they look inquisitively at you, kind of like Ronald Reagan did, you know, what's that? <laughs> you know, then you know they haven't had the real thing, you know, that they, they might be just good conservative people, but they, they really haven't had the real thing, you know. So if they do that, well, then you know you, you, you got a live one there. But at any rate, the best thing we can do is um, repent because God is not going to save this land. He said, you're going to be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The beast is going to make war on the saints. That's what the Bible says. And the beast is all nations, as we proved very well last time. And the harlot sits upon a seven-headed, ten-horned beast. Seven heads, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, Rome, and now revived Rome. A worldwide Roman Empire. And ten horns. The ten continental divisions of the earth that the UN is going to give authority to. We're talking about the whole world coming against Christianity so that the Christians will realize that their kingdom's not of this world either. It's the only way. Every time Israel made in the Old Testament as a type and a shadow for us, every time they made allegiances with uh, national uh, world kingdoms, God said he turned their lovers against them. And uh, that's exactly where we're going, folks. And the patriotism that Christians have in America for America should be turned towards God. That's where your allegiance is. Don't pledge allegiance to no nation that's going to turn against God because that's going to happen. They're going to hate you. All nations are going to hate you. Pledge allegiance to God. Don't pledge anything. That's what the Bible says. But turn your allegiance to God. When America, who is designing the mark of the beast, demands that for the sake of the safety of Americans, that everyone takes this mark so that they can see you from a satellite and can tell who is the, the, the dirty doer, who's the lawbreaker. When they do that for the sake of uh, finding out who the terrorists are or controlling the terrorists, then you've pledged allegiance to this land. 
you'll have to take the mark. <laughs> no, we don't want to do such a thing. Listen, our allegiance is to the Lord. People have died. Christians, many multitudes of Christians have died not to swear any allegiance to Caesar. Even a modern day Caesar. You know what was the symbol of the Caesar's empire? The great eagle. Another historical repetition here. You know who's the head of the image of the beast in Daniel chapter 2 and chapter 3? The great eagle. You know who's the head of the world today? The head of the UN? The great eagle. History just keeps repeating. So, do you know who's going to persecute the saints? Historically, who was it? The great eagle. Yes, they are going to come against the saints. They are going to make war on the saints. And there won't be a thing you can do to stop it. You can, you can pray, you can repent, but this is not the land that God's going to restore. Physically, the land he was speaking about there was Israel. And spiritually, in the New Testament, it's still Israel. Because he's not an Israelite who's one outwardly in the circumcision of the flesh. He's an Israelite who's one inwardly in the circumcision of the heart. In the New Testament, to be Israel, you have to be born again. Otherwise, you're broken off of the olive tree. That's what he says. If you're in unbelief concerning Jesus Christ and salvation, you are broken off of the olive tree called all Israel. So, um, see, our land is not the, the, this world, not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. We have entered into a spiritual kingdom now, not a physical one. We are one nation, which covers the globe. And that's the nation we want to make sure that we're loyal to. Not any kingdom of this world. God's calling his people out of the kingdoms of this world and into the kingdom of New Testament spiritual Israel, of which the church is grafted into. That's where our loyalty has to be, folks. And soon enough, God's people will discover that. I'm talking about God's true elect are going to discover it soon enough. They're going to know this. And the only thing that's going to give this revelation is when the world turns against God's people. When the beast destroys the harlot, too. Because we have to come out. Where did God say in Revelation 18 his people were? He said, come out of her, my people. God's people are in a harlot. They've been in love with the world. They've been receiving the seed of the world instead of the seed of the kingdom. Come out of her, my people. So we have to repent because, once again, history is going to repeat. It's because God's on the throne. Man makes the same mistakes, and God does the same thing to, uh, to deal with those mistakes. And I know I might have offended a few of you out there that have the patriotic spirit, but I'll tell you, God's going to deal with that very quickly. You have to repent of it. It's not God and country, folks. It's God. Just God. Because our country is not of this world. We're just sojourners. We're passing through. The people who love this world, and y'all heard me give the testimony of Howard Pittman, a Baptist preacher for 35 years, who died and went up to the throne. An angel came and took him to the throne. Something he didn't believe would even happen, you know. And, uh, he wanted to ask the Lord to give him his life back because he didn't have any interest in heaven. His interest was all in this world. And when God spoke to him, it knocked him down. Told him he had a self-righteous, worthless life. He was basically playing Christianity. Well, when he came back, came back a changed man. He had a massive uh, rupture of um, of a vessel, one of the main vessels in the heart, going to the heart. And he died on the table. And God brought him back. And he came back a changed man. And I'll tell you one thing he did do. He went on to get filled with the Holy Spirit and read his Bible and decide that he, he no longer could support religion. He had to, um, from that day forward, be a Christian and submit to the Word of God. And um, it's an awesome testimony. I think it, one of his Books is called Demons and Eyewitness Account. This is my favorite. Demons and Eyewitness. It's a really good, really good book. You might search for it online. I don't know exactly where you can get it right now, but do a search for it. Demons and Eyewitness Account. It'll be a good. It'll be. It's very edifying. You'll get a good blessing out of it to know what's going on all around you. 
you know, all around you folks, demons are doing their work. I, 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 a few years ago, I went to uh, minister in a, a Presbyterian church, and they were reading Piercing the Darkness by Peretti. And it was kind of strange because in Piercing the Darkness, as you know, it's a, it's a, a, a fiction, <laughs> although some people don't think it's a fiction. You know, they have the, the demons warring with the, the angels. And... Um, they're, they're figuring strategy and they're hiding behind houses and, you know, goofy things that you know can't happen in the spiritual realm when you can walk through a wall and, and nothing physical hinders. You know, it was just a very goofy book, frankly. And, um, the truth is that, um, that's not the kind of warfare that's going on at all. Demons are, are everywhere and angels are everywhere. And we are the ones that give them authority. If we give in to the temptations of the flesh, we give authority to the devil to administer the curse to us. That's exactly what we do. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is loose in heaven. If we're loosing the devil, it's because we're living in the flesh, walking in the flesh. And if we submit to God and resist the devil, he flees. You know, I can tell you, for a fact, the, de- the, the demons and the angels can stand side by side. They are waiting for you to give authority. If you agree with the word of God, you lose the angels. If you agree with the devil, you lose him. At the same time, if you agree with the word of God, you bind the devil and you lose the angels. And if you agree with the word of God, if you don't agree with the word of God, you bind the Lord. Just like the Bible tells us that the Lord himself said he could not do many mighty works because of their unbelief. Unbelief binds the Lord. He cannot do what he's promised because he's made a condition on what he promised and he can't lie. Be it unto you according to your faith. There's a condition. As you have believed, let it be. so shall it be unto you. There's a condition. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to the one that believes. There's the condition. You see, we bind God. Because he cannot lie, we bind him through unbelief. So the angels and the demons are are all around us, waiting. The the angels, of course, to administer God's salvation, as Hebrews says. They're ministering spirits sent forth to do service for them that are heirs of salvation. And the demons, who have authority over those who walk in sin. God has given them that authority, and we can't even take it away from them. That's why we have to repent. So the warfare is very different from what the carnal mind would have you believe. The warfare, according to uh, Revelation chapter 12, it says, verse 11, speaking of the saints, while in verse 8, 9, 10, 11, the dragon is warring with his angels and Michael's warring with his angels. It says in verse 11, Speaking of the saints, and they overcame him. The saints overcame the devil. They overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life even unto death. The saints overcame. How come, how come the devil and his angels are wrestling with the, the angels of God and Michael? It's because You give authority to the winning side, folks. I can tell you that Michael and his angels back right off if you start walking in sin and disagree with the word, because they're bound. You've bound them by your unbelief. The Bible says if you add to the words of this book, he'll add to you the curses that are written in this book. And if you take away from the words of this book, he'll take away your part from the tree of life. See, we're the ones that give authority to the angels. Because they move on what we say and what we believe. They administer God's salvation when we believe. And when they don't, the devil administers the curse. So we have to learn to agree with the Word of God. It's the most important thing to God's people right now, which is, which is basically what repentance is. It's learning to agree with the Word of God. In your speech, in your actions, in your thoughts, that's what repentance is. Change your mind. If we change our mind, guess who? Won't have authority over us. Guess who can't administer the curse to us? 
That's right. That's the rules. You know, the devil knows the rules and he obeys them. Read the book of Job. He knows the rules. In piercing the darkness, they stabbed an angel and he died. I thought, now that's kind of dumb. Where do you get that? That's not in the Bible. I remember one time that, that a demon went through a wall and, and he hit out on the other side of a building and an angel went through the wall and he stuck his sword out and killed the angel. That's the kind of goofy books they are out there, folks. No, the truth is that just doesn't happen. You don't hide behind anything for an angel. No, the truth is the um, that um, they both know when they can do their works. They have laws. The kingdom of heaven is ruled by laws, and uh, the laws are this book. They know when they have authority, and they know when they don't. We give them authority when we submit and believe, and we take away the angels' authorities when we don't believe and when we walk in sin. And so, with the things that are coming upon the world right now, where would you like to be? <laughs> in God's favor every moment, right? Uh, having his, his, um, having the blood on the doorposts all the time, right? Having eaten the lamb and ready for the Passover, right? That's where we want to be. So, I mean, put the word of God in your heart and get ready because a great shaking is coming. My thirsting soul, purest water, make me whole. Let your streams of mercy flow, oh Jesus. I trust in you. Though the mountains fall into the sea, though the rivers rise, I still believe. For your mercy stands and your word is true, oh Jesus. I trust in